side that the book focuses on is uh, kind of a local angle. Uh, Fred Chiyosaki uh, grew up in Spokane. Uh, he lived in Hilliard, uh, down by the railroad tracks in, uh, in Spokane. His family ran a uh, family, a, a commercial laundry, and they lived in an apartment above the laundry. And um, when Pearl Harbor happened, uh, Fred was at home. He was a student at John Rogers High School in um, Spokane. And he heard about Pearl Harbor on the radio, listening, otherwise he's doing his homework that morning. And he was absolutely horrified and shocked and didn't know what to make of what was happening and his parents were even more in shock. But Fred went immediately downtown Spokane, I think it was the next day or two days later, and tried to enlist. And again, although he was an American citizen, had lived all his life here, Fred was told that he, he couldn't enlist, he was an enemy alien. So, um, so Fred was uh, pretty humiliated by that, I'll say. Um, he spent the next year at Gonzaga but he was one of very, very few male students at Gonzaga that year. And he basically found it humiliating to walk around on, on campus. So um, a year passed, and then the 442nd was created, and uh, Fred immediately signed up. He went to Camp Shelby, he went through the basic training there, and wound up in K Company uh, with Rudy Tokiwa going up the mountain that, that day. And Fred lost a particularly close friend that day. He lost a number of friends that day, but he lost a particularly close friend that day, and he, he never really got over it in some ways. Um, and so, actually, the clip I'm going to play now is Fred, um, Fred talking about an experience he had when the war was over and he was on his way back to uh, Spokane and he was coming through Washington, D.C. Uh, we were, I was on the train by myself, and we stopped in Washington, D.C. And uh, I was asked, you know, from, the, from that railroad station, you could see the Capitol building. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that must have been the Union Station. And I was sitting there looking out the window, and this, this GI came out, Bucks, I think he's a buck sergeant. And he stopped, and he looked at me, and he looked at my patch. He says, hey, you were the 442nd. I said, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, were you at the Lost Battalion? And I said, yeah. I was there. He says, I was in there. So he was one of the 200 men that you rescued? Yeah, yeah, and he, and, uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I, anyway, it's one of those things. I, 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 I could just feel myself getting really, I was angry, God, and I turned to him and I said, uh, do you know how many men we lost? We lost getting you guys out of there. You know how many of my friends died in there? And, uh, well, he said, you don't, you know, you know, if you guys were in there, We'd have come after you. And uh, I shook my head and I said, well, he said, anyway, I want to thank you, you know. He put out his hand and I turned away and looked out the window. So that may seem like a pretty ungracious moment, but I, I play it because it really underscores. You, uh, Fred was, was still alive when I started writing the book, and you have to understand, understand that Fred was just the most affable, likable guy in the world. He wouldn't shake that guy's hand because he hadn't gotten over what had happened yet. And it really underscores the trauma of what had happened uh, to him and to those other young men uh, that, that he took that attitude. So I think it's, it's only fair to, uh, to share that perspective with you.